damage or... Once we sort of crowd Kent back to his room, uh, it was the middle of the day. We had to go see the city. Melba! Yeah, buddy. Where are we going? Take me with it's you. Yeah, dude, I'm seeing it out. Where are we going? We're going to meet at the Christ. And you're going to beg forgiveness on the mountaintop. So come along with me. Yeah. So I haven't heard from my husband, just wanted to make sure he's not in jail. So we're backstage at Rio, getting ready to play. It's the countdown, 15 minutes to go. We're warming up, and I know that, that this is going to be a train wreck. If we had a choice of sucking on stage or not sucking, we'd prefer the not sucking. But there's not that much difference between sucking and not sucking for us. We almost sound exactly the same. And I don't even know if people know the difference. Now we're over 30, now look, oh, God. It's terrible, it's gonna be terrible. Five minutes. Five minutes. Coming, I'm coming along. Everything okay here? Yeah, Kent got real drunk, but you know he showed up and did his job just like he always does. Why didn't we practice before this tour started, Smelly? We're lazy. <laughs> that's, that's the real reason. Right? Now we're paying the price. Actually, no, better pay the price. Well, it was like 3,000 kids, or 4,000 kids. We could hear them screaming, and I'm going like. Oh, no, we are so not ready for this. We have a practice. First Brazil show, it started off great. The crowd was amazing. But in the middle of it, I look over at Eric Melvin, and his guitar goes out. 30 seconds in, my guitar just stops working. Here I am in front of a couple thousand kids. My shit doesn't work. His guitar broke. Took about five to 10 minutes to figure it out. It gets going, and then the guy starts messing with it again, and he breaks it again. I was just like, can't you just roll with the punches? If he just would have played his guitar, just plugged straight into the amp, it would have been fine. But he had to mess with it for 10 minutes. The whole crowd turned on us, and everything just turned to crap. You ready? You two piece of is ruining our show. Come on, let's go, buddy. What, you're in a hurry to go somewhere else? You have somewhere else to be after. Eric Melvin says something to the crowd. Like, well, you, got a you, you got a better place to be? It started turning really ugly right then. Promoters that would never call me. Yeah. He's crying that he fears for his mother and his sister and their lives. It was our first show in Brazil, and then Melvin's guitar broke, but then he spent 10 minutes working on his tuner. He didn't need to do that. I mean, things were going great, and then he just stopped the show. Let's change this. Let's try this now. I'm trying to get the two. It worked. Oh, that's really fucking important. You make it work and you go. We just we couldn't get it back on track. The show was a disaster. It was it was a wreck. Hey, thank you very much. I had a fucking great time tonight. 
I don't get annoyed very often, and I was, I was pissed. You guys were like, uh, 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 maybe it's this, maybe it's this, and it, it, it fell apart. No, dude, you sure heard it. It was all up. I mean, you couldn't hear it. It wasn't even there. It was like, oh, and then if I play the clean channel, it was this. Melvin kind of forgot what our band's about. So I was a little upset and I just, you know, I had to say something to him. Like, dude, just get your guitar working so we can play. Remember when we used to record records with no tuners? Brazil was like our safety net. We'd been there before, we had a good promoter and everything went well, except for us, we didn't, we didn't go well. And now we're going to countries that we really have no idea what's gonna happen. One of the most exciting destinations on the whole tour had to be Medellin drug capital of the world, super scary, one of the most dangerous cities in the whole world, and coincidentally, one of the places where we heard nothing from the promoters. On our own, we called the club that he told us we were playing at, and they said they had no idea of our show. So what are we supposed to do? We had to uh, cancel that show. And then, of course, all of a sudden, my phone's ringing off the hook and the emails are coming nonstop. I, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, I, tr I tried and tried to get any kind of confidence in you guys. And at some point I had to give up because all I had was lies. Nofex is actually my family. Do you think I'm gonna take my family to this country I know nothing about when I'm absolutely certain the people that are supposed to care for us there are fucking useless? They were f totally freaking out and scared. Suddenly this one guy, Cheo, says, I need to know what's going on. Sergio from Colombia is receiving a lot of calls for death threats. The promoter from Medellin probably is dead. I really mean it. Colombia is not easy. If you do something wrong, you'll be murdered. The promoters that would never call me, he's crying that he fears for his mother and his sister and their lives. What? And he's in Medellin, Colombia, so it's like, it, it gets me a little bit, uh, bad feeling in my stomach. It doesn't make you feel good. My bottom line is, you fear for your family? This band is my family. I'm gonna bring them to a place that I know to be dangerous where I have absolutely no faith in the in the people that are taking care of us. Yeah, like, what are we supposed to do? We're, we're completely in the dark of the whole situation. It's like, what the f are we supposed to do? When we knew things in South America were going to be sketchy, and they are sketchy, and they're going badly. We're just hoping that we're finally going to get to a country where everything goes smoothly. But Chile was crazy right when we got there. <laughs> Before the show, the crowd was crazy, jumping off the balconies. Kids were just coming over the balcony, crowding the floor area even more. That is a chill pill. I'm gonna take one. Feeling antsy. Could be seeing all the kids pouring over the balcony. It just seemed pretty dangerous. <laughs> start playing and it's the same way, it's just kids crazy jumping off the balconies. It turns out there's about 3,000 people and they all want to be on the floor. Sure enough, they just start doink, 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 doink. They're just constantly jumping like, wow. And then everyone's running on the stage. I was a little worried for my own safety a little bit. They didn't even know what they wanted to do once they got on stage. Not the normal get on stage and then stage dive. They were just grabbing us. I'm playing a song and some guy jumps off the balcony, boom, and he just runs up on the stage, grabs me in a headlock, and just choking me out pretty good. And I hear him like, ah, it, man. And I'm like, ah, ah, somebody help. Yeah, they were just crazy. They were, they were not stopping. They were getting on the floor. They were doing whatever they wanted to do. The show exploded. The kids were just so pent up, and it just exploded with energy. It was a really crazy show, but we came on this tour to play crazy and chaotic shows, and we found it when we got to Chile. The Chile show was insane.
This show is exactly the kind of punk show we were hoping to get by touring down here. And now I want more.